God wants your dreams and visions realized. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Every heart cleared, every head bowed. Father God, as we enter into your presence this morning, Father God, Lord, we give this place to you, Father God. We give our hearts to you, Father God. Have your way, O oh God, this yes. morning, O oh God. Use us, O oh God, to fulfill your purpose in our lives, O oh God. Father God, your presence is here, Father God. Yes. We thank you, O oh God. We receive, we receive you this morning, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for just setting this atmosphere for worship so we can continue to shout out to you, O oh God. We give you the highest praises, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the foundation that you have set in this ministry, O oh God. And we thank you for giving, the, giving us the building blocks, O oh God, to continue to continue to build, O oh God, to continue to build for your glory and your, your purpose, O oh God. Father God, as your word comes forth today, O oh God, Lord, we pray that it will land on good ground. Yes. Father God, use your manservant, O oh God, today to speak to your people, O oh God. Put your words in him. Let his words be your words, O oh God. Yes. Lord God, let his actions be yours, O oh God. Yes. Lord, let your light shine, O oh God, yes. that everyone may see him, see you through him, Father God. Yes. Lord, we submit to you, O oh God. We pray that you just have your way on today, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our sister Allison was praying and actually just maybe want to share a quick testimony with you all. And I want to belabor the time because I'm ready to praise God. I really believe his spirit is filled in this place today. Yes. And so I just want to share a quick testimony. Yesterday I was out with my family for Valentine's Day and I was talking to God before we were going there. Just, you know, worried about finances and worried about actually going out just to celebrate and to spend the time. But I was like, you know, Lord, I know that you'll work it out. And so long story made short, we were sitting there, we were in the middle of our breakfast, and a young girl came over to us, and she was like, you know, I'm here celebrating with my father, and we were just thinking how cool it is that you all are sitting there celebrating with each other, so we just want to bless you, and we want to take care of your bill. So she left $30 at the table, and actually took care of our bill, and left us with something wow. else. So it reminds me of the scripture today, and it's coming from Galatians 2 and 20. And what it is, it says, I'm crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless, I live. Yes. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yes. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who lived, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. So it wasn't me that was sitting there at the table right. that was singled out by everybody else that was sitting there with their families. But they chose to come over because they saw the Christ living in yes. me. Yes. And they wanted to bless me because they saw that. So that's why I'm so glad to say that my life belongs to you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all of the honor, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. We thank you. Praise to your name, God. Where our life belongs to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Come on, let's get on beat.
move it higher in the name of Jesus. You know the two. For the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying, I'm laying, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. one another. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and tell somebody happy Sunday. Amen.
this morning. I want you to look to your left. I want you to look to your right. I want you to look in front of you. I want you to look behind you. Everywhere that you look, God's love is all around. If you look to the left, you look to the right, you look in front, you look in back, you are surrounded by God's love this morning. So we just want to encourage your heart and let you know that everywhere you look, God's love is all around. Amen.
to celebrate with yesterday, but you can celebrate today with God because God loves you. He cares for you. He adores you. He watches over you. And everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, you can see the love of God and you can feel the love of God. So that's good news this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everywhere we look, God's love is all around. And that's why we're here this morning to encourage you. For those that may not have had Valentine to celebrate, may not have had someone to celebrate with, we want you to know that we love you this morning. We love you this morning. And more importantly, God loves you. And that's why you are here today. Because his love draws us. His love keeps us. His love comforts us. Hallelujah. And we love you back, God. Hallelujah. We love you back, oh God. Hallelujah. And we just lift our hands to you. And say how much we love you, oh God. We worship you, God. We bless your holy name, oh God. Because you alone are worthy to be praised. But 
for your grace. Son for your grace. Come on and say grace. Grace. It's his grace that keeps us today. It's his grace that covers us today. It's his grace that watches over us today. Hallelujah. We thank you for your grace, oh God. We honor you for your grace, oh God. We celebrate you because we know that it's your grace, oh God, that keeps us in
so that we can freely reverence your name. In the name of Jesus, have your way, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, send a sweet spirit in this place. Send your fresh anointing in this place. In the name of Jesus. For I give you my heart, O oh God. I give you my life, O oh God. Use me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say to worship you, I live to worship you. 
Let's lift that up again. 
is here, oh God. Come on and say that. Your power is here, oh God. Come on and say, your power is here, oh God. Your power is here, oh God. Come on and say, your power. Your power is here. Come on and say, your healing is here. Your healing is here. He's here to heal the sick this morning. Hallelujah. He's here to set the captives free this morning. of our situations, circumstances, our trials, and our suffering, even when things are going good, we still cry out to you, Lord God, for we shall not only honor you in the bad times, but also in the good times. We pray that you accept our sacrifice of praise this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We'd like to welcome you to Divine Truth Christian Center where God wants your dreams and visions realized. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Some of you may have been seeing me kind of scoot around a little bit. Amen. Just wearing a couple of hats. So I'm putting on a different hat right now. Amen. First, I'd like to give honor to God, my wife and family and visitors and members, online guests, and also... <laughs> Those of you that had a hopefully a, a good Valentine's Day yesterday, whether you were with somebody or not, amen, amen. I was teasing with somebody this morning and say, you know, Valentine's Day is really Women's Appreciation Day. <laughs> I'm not going to get in trouble with that, but I'm just going to move up. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 47 through 57, and I think this will really touch your heart this morning because while I believe there's a lot of jubilation and things that are going on there's still 
some digging that needs to be done, and I think this will help you out. Listen to this and see if this identifies with your life, either right now or just recently. And if you've never had any trouble before, this will be your testimony. Verse 47 says, we've been to hell and back. You should have just said amen. I got one amen. We've nowhere to turn, nowhere to go. Rivers of tears pour from my eyes and the smash up of my dear people. The tears stream from my eyes, an artesian well of tears. Until you, God, look down from on high and look and see my tears. When I see what's happening to the young men in the city, the praying breaks my heart. Enemies with no reason to be enemies hunted me down like a bird. They threw me into a pit and pelted me with stones. Then the rains came and filled the pit. Mm. The water rose over my head and I said, it's all over. I called out your name, O oh God. Called from the bottom of the pit. You listened when I called out. Don't shut your ears. Get me out of here. Save me. You came close when I called out. You said, it's going to be all right. Amen. The title of this morning's message is, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right, be all right, be all right, be all right. There are many things in this life that can throw one for a loop, a tizzy, if you will. Unexpected things, unknown things, uncertain things. If you are blessed to have seen the sunrise for any length of time, you will know that things can and will happen. Life happens. It happens. I could have said something else, but I didn't. You get my gist. Suffering, trouble, tests, and trials all meet us at our doors regardless of the amount of money, the best of preparation, the acquisition of knowledge, or the help of family. Even friends that support you can't, you can't really get you out of certain types of situations. There are even times, people of God, when the game of what ifs, which is one that we should not play, drafts us in the first round. And the fight of faith is upon us before our stance on the word of God is even set in place. For those of you that don't understand what drafted means, that means that the situation picked you and you weren't even trying to go there. But the situation went there and it says, okay, time for you to fight. And you're not, you're not even ready to fight. You're fighting already. It is a pun. You got a, a letter in the mail, a notice. Uh, uh, you clutch your chest in the middle of the night. You can't breathe. Uh, some type of situation or circumstances suddenly upon you. And now you have to fight. You didn't ask for it. But as my father said many years ago when he was teaching us about typing and things like that, how be it? Uh, however, albeit and notwithstanding, God said everything, even with all that stuff, is going to be all right. Let me see if I can make this a little bit more plain because some of y'all are looking at me like, okay, when is he going to start hollering? It might happen. It may not happen. We'll see. Recently, a, a woman counseled me that when one is going through tests and trials, however intense or long they may be, that you should see those same situations not only from your perspective as the one that's saying, oh God, why? To see things from God's perspective. Truthfully, while 
that may seem insensitive at first, it is sound wisdom, especially when the enemy tries to convolute or distort the grooming process that you and I must go to. That, that For those of us that claim to be a Christian, uh, we have to go through a grooming process into the image and likeness of Christ through, here's the punchline, suffering. Suffering. Uh, suffering? But preacher, I thought the message stated that you had a feeling that everything was going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. It is. That's correct. You just have to believe that not only when things are at peace or at calm, but you have to believe that when God comes into your life, that he at times allows suffering to enter in for your good and his glory. Amen. See, a lot of times people, and I see people when they post certain things and, and write certain things, well, you know, like the young lady that was the other day and she won the lottery ticket. I know y'all still play the lottery, so I'm not going to jump on you right there. Just remember the tie. <laughs> And give an offering. Amen. We will put it to good use. Amen. Your, your hands may be dirty, but the priest's hands are clean. I'll wash it before and after. Amen. So this 26-year-old woman won the lottery, and she won several million dollars or whatnot. And then there were some people that were giving her kudos and things like that. And then there were some people who were saying, well, God bless her. But then there were some other people who missed the whole point of giving her kudos and said, God didn't give her that. She lucked out and won the ticket. Amen. But God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. If it was God was so good, why didn't he let everybody else win? But I pose a different question. Why should he let you win? Do you even deserve it? Just saying. Who are you to try to push the one that created all heaven and earth to do what you want to do when you don't always do what he says for you to do? You know you have a long track record of not doing well. But I digress. And see, I have to restrain myself from even chiming in because, you know, when you talk to unsaved folk, it doesn't make sense to them anyway. But the truth of the matter is, is that when one person suffered, as she particularly suffered, then God gives grace and mercy upon who he chooses. That's why he is sovereign. And everybody has good things to happen to them one point in time or another. It's just that we skip over the things and we take certain things for granted, such as breathing, being alive. As long as you got food on your table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and you are in your right mind, you are truly blessed. Now, one would think, Especially when you think about a topic such as this and even things about suffering, that, 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 that the definition of suffering solely means to afflict or persecute or agitate. Like the boss at your job is persecuting you because you got a cross around your neck or, or religious liberty is being trampled upon because you got Chick-fil-A at your desk. Uh, you, you got situations or circumstances that are popping up and, and happening, but that's not it. Because on the surface, that is usually how one person feels. But in reality, suffering or to suffer means to permit or allow. Look at the definition. Suffer actually means to permit or to allow. To fully grasp this biblical concept, you need to know that suffering has its purpose. You may be going through, but remember God said, even though you've been through hell and back again, that everything is going to be all right. See, sometimes we think that everything being all right means no suffering or that the suffering will be over with and then everything is all right. No, everything is going to be all right while you're in pain. Last time I checked, when you get off the operating table after a great physician works on you, you're still sore from what has just happened. You're in the process of healing, but yet it's still painful as well. Suffering has its purpose. So as my first uh, uh, line item for this morning, uh, I want to give you a little bit of encouragement in the midst of this balanced message, if you will. Number one, there is good news for weary people. 
It's good news for weary people. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 14 in the New King James Version says, Beloved, this is something that you need to know, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Amen. As though some strange thing has happened to you. Oh, God, you mean me? I didn't deserve that. I, I come to church. You don't come to church. You are the church. You don't go to a building and think things are supposed to change and, and, and trouble is supposed to cease only. No, it, it's not the building. It's you, you, you. Wherever you go, you are the church. And people, when they come to talk to you, they're going to church, depending on your conversation, that is. Are your church doors open or are they closed with religion and the flesh? But notice what the text says. It says in verse 13, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed. On their part, they say God is not real. On their part, why do you believe in fairy tales? On their part, why don't you believe in science? And then the Bible is a man-made book, and how could you trust a man-made book? But you trust man-made materials from a doctor? Without even thinking about it, you take all the pills and just go, go, and it's going to work, isn't it? Because I know, because medical science, but even though it's oddly enough that medical science uses the word believe more than the Bible. Scientists believe. And they're all human as well. So it says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. When you live for God and people bother you because you believe God, Blessed are you, for the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. This lets us know, people of God, that suffering has a purpose, but everything is going to be all right. Suffering also has a unique purpose in that it causes the flesh to cease from sinning. That is the wildest thing. And I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it. Watch this. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11 says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Haven't you think, just think about the suffering causes, the flesh to cease. What does that mean, Pastor Martin? I'd like to hear, here it go. When you are going through troubles and trials and tests, sometimes people have a tendency to stop doing what they used to be doing. Amen. Instead of you wanting to argue or fuss and fight or resist somebody, you now are concentrating on this lump in my breast instead. And God knows that we live in a sinful world, so oftentimes he'll allow for you to focus on that, and he'll have you praying. And other people that find out, they start praying for you, and then your intimate relationship with God begins to grow, no matter the outcome. Because sometimes people believe that just because it's, if, if it gets healed, then he's on your side. But even if it's not healed, he's still on your side. He's able either way. Because this life is not the end of the matter. This life is temporary. Everybody is going to die. Everybody. So I'm just giving you some balance to this particular equation. Do you really deserve things? Or is it that God is just being merciful to you? Remember, karma which is a Hinduistic type of belief system, says you get what you deserve, but grace says you get what you don't deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So suffering causes the flesh to cease from sinning. Sometimes many of us have to go through a bad relationship in order to take care of the 
new relationship. Okay. Some of us have to go to a bad church in order for us to really grasp on to a good church. Some of us have to go through a bad job in order for us to appreciate the good job because, you know, good and well, you are late every day and you get mad at them for calling you in the office. Sometimes you have to go through bad situations or circumstances. But, but the Bible says, well, who did sin? I mean, there was a man that was blind from his youth, and Jesus came up to him, and there were a bunch of Pharisees and scribes and hypocrites all around him. And the, the man called out, Jesus, can you help me? Can you save me? And Jesus healed the man. And then the, the people were like, well, did this man sin? They were trying to catch him up because, you know, sometimes religious people believe that when you're going through suffering, you must have done something to deserve it. See, that's the reason why. See, look at you. Uh -huh. Until you do right by me, everything's going to crumble. But not so. You don't know if that person's going through a test or trial or a consequence. Just don't know. So Jesus was sitting there, and he healed that particular blind man. But those religious folk that were around him said, well, Jesus, they didn't even care what he said. Well, Jesus, why was this man blind? Or let, us, let it put into contemporary words, if God was so good, then why is he blind? Shouldn't everybody be healed? But people don't understand that we do not live in a perfect world. And for every person that's going through a test and trial, remember, there's six billion people on the planet, so everybody's not dead. And everybody's not suffering. Six billion. You know how many people that is? That's a lot. So the blind man was crying out. And then the scribe and Pharisee said, did this man sin? Is he the reason why he's in this particular condition? Because he was blind from birth. But Jesus said, no, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't even his parents' fault. But is that, that situation is there so that I may be glorified. Sometimes you're born with a testimony. Born with a congenital heart defect. But yet you're on the cheerleading team. Born with a speech impediment, but yet you preach it. Born with a condition or abnormality. Whether those of you know it or not, people diagnose me with dyslexia. That's why I have a tendency to sometimes say certain things backwards. That's what they told me in college. They said, you have a learning disability. I just kind of looked at the lady. I was like, you just not figuring it out? I fooled everybody for all these years. Well, sometimes God gives you an affliction. So that while somebody else is going through something, they know that they can make it too. Let me make it plain to you. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 5 in the New Living Translation says this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Let's stop right there. You do realize that one of the things that makes you fulfilled when you come to the house of the Lord and be among the people of God is that you have a spirit of giving. If you have a spirit of selfishness, now this is not a prosperity message as far as money because money is only one part of it. But if you just come to get, but you don't offer what you have gone through, offer what is in your life to anyone else, then you won't feel involved. Therefore, you'll detach yourself and see yourself as useless. Amen. So you have to have a giving spirit because God is the giver of life and all things. So when I come here, I'm giving words of encouragement, life and truth. I give because I want somebody to give that to me. Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give it to your bosom. So whatever you give to others, you're going to get back. See, that's before karma. Mm-hmm. It's chic to say that word, but, but that's the truth. So in other words, you reap what you sow because if you don't do nothing when you're here, you get nothing when you're here. If you're stingy and you only want to open up this part of your life or you want to take, 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 but you don't want to give a part of your life, give encouragement, then you're going to find yourself in isolation. I'm trying to help. I helped about 15 people just with that word alone. 
So all praise to God, the Father of our Lord is Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us and all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more, here it is, here it is, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. In the medical field, uh, I, I, like I told you all before, I, before I got into information technology, I used to be an occupational therapist. And one of the things that they taught us while we were in school, which was kind of weird, it was in a textbook, but they taught us the concept of empathy versus sympathy. Empathy versus sympathy. Sympathy is when somebody just says, I feel sorry for you. My heart goes out to you, but you really don't feel the words that you're saying. You're not sincere. Then there's empathy. Empathy is when the person is crying, you're crying too, because while they are just cleaning themselves up from a rape, you just went through one five or six years ago, and you know and understand what the pain is, so you can minister to them on a deeper level. You can minister to a person that has turned their back on their family because you did once upon a time or you saw your mom and dad do the same type of thing. You went through hell and now they're going through hell so you help them go through hell. You're giving somebody comfort in the middle of their situation. If you don't have anybody that you're giving to, then you're being miserable and keeping what God has comforted you with to yourself. See, that's the problem, people of God. People like to be blessed and disappear from church after they got what God has given them. They go away. They get healed. And then they leave. But the Bible says that Jesus said when you have been converted, you go ahead and you heal others if you truly have been converted. So, 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 so when you come here and, and, and you're going through something and you get better, you don't just leave saying, I got everything all together now. That shows your motives. Because remember, you have to stay attached to the one who gave you peace of mind, and that is God. When you leave him, even though he let a gift follow you, the gift runs out. You miss that. You miss that. You, you, you. So you come, so you stay attached, not to people, but stay attached to God. You get your miracle and then you disappear? Okay, don't go to the grocery store for 15 days plus. If you don't go to the grocery store for 15 days plus, you'll eat for a little while, but after a while you become hungry, and after a while you become starving. After a while you'll start looking around talking about, Mom, Mom, where's the food at? Well, son, it's, daughter, it's at the grocery store. Go down to the grocery store and get what you need. And if you understand that concept, the next time you go to the grocery store, you won't just buy groceries for yourself. You'll buy some for someone else. Amen. So our suffering helps us comfort others who are suffering. So those of you who have ever thought about preaching or teaching, whether male or female, this is a suffering office. How do you think that a preacher is able to preach a different message on a Monday or Wednesday or Thursday every single week, a different topic to the same people from the same Bible for 50 or 30 or 20 years or even five years? To be able to relate to each and every particular person because oftentimes that preacher goes through a lot of suffering. Amen. I couldn't even sleep last night. Because I know that there were some things that were troubling some of you in the middle of the night. Kept on waking up. God, what do you want? Kept on waking up. God, what do you want? Kept on waking up. God, what do you want? And then I started to pray, Lord, let your will be done. There's some other things that we need to know. Because even though you may be in the fire right now, 
you do need to realize that our suffering will end in glory. Eventually, it's going to be over with. Eventually, it's going to stop. Eventually, the pain will stop. Now, once again, if you have, and I've met people with terminal illnesses, there's two different types of perspectives that you can take. One particular perspective is, oh, God, why did you do this to me? Or the other perspective is, Lord God, when I die, I'll be totally healed. Not everybody's there yet. I thought about that many times. The older I get, because I know I'm not going to live another hundred years. You're not going to Frankenstein me and put me together. <laughs> Have my head inside of a bottle somewhere talking to y'all or preaching to y'all, talking about he was a good man, like on Futurama. <laughs> so our suffering will end in glory. This should give you hope because eventually, whether in this life or in the next, eventually things will pass. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 18 says this. It says this. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed. Lord God, I don't understand. I'm just talking about me. Lord God, I don't understand. I don't understand what's wrong with folk. You love them, and then they leave you alone. Love them and leave them alone. They gotta, you love, they, I don't understand. I'm doing everything I can at this job. Lord God, I don't understand why they don't recognize my gift. Lord God, I don't understand. Why do I have to come to church every Sunday? Can't I just do two of them and then be good for the rest of the year? <laughs> we are perplexed, but not driven to despair. So that verse lets us know that there's trouble, there's pressure, there's lack of understanding. But God will not put more on you than you could bear. He will not push you to despair. He, it's, it's like you being up under the weight bench and you're, uh, God is saying, give me 20 and you're on four. You think that you can only get the five. But he's spotting you the entire time. He's looking over you and he's watching over you and he knows that you can make it to 20. Because he made you and he knows all about you. He knows what you're capable of. You're not even aware of everything that you're capable of. You mean God, I had to be celibate for how long? I'm preaching that one. Let me keep on going. Verse 9 says, we are hunted down but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live on the constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. And when we talk about constant death, that doesn't mean that somebody has a bullet up against your head. Not in all cases. Sometimes it's like what Paul says, I die daily. Because to be more like Christ means that you have to die to your flesh, die to your emotions. Okay, example time. Bing, bing, bing. Ryan, come on up here. Reverend Winsley, come on up here. Okay. Sean, come on up here. All right. Let me give you an example. These are trials, tests, and circumstances. I'm walking through life, minding my own business, and then I go down and I say, God, use me. Send me, Lord. I believe you. I trust you. And then all of a sudden, God is like, okay, time for you to go through basic training. The honeymoon is over. So now trials come. Now, tests come and circumstances come. Now, trials, tests, and circumstances, I want you to follow instructions. Count to 100 really loud. One, two, three. Use the alphabet or to say the alphabet really loud. Yeah. And when you get the Z, start over again. Yeah. A, B, C. G. Clap your hands in front of my face. No, you got to come in. You got to get in my grill. Come on. A. Louder. Yeah. Father, I don't understand why these people are at my job. 
This is just getting on my nerves. Three months later, Lord God, is there anywhere around this? It seems like it's blocking me. You know what? Why don't you just get out of my face? I don't want to. No, I can't do that because I'm supposed to be saved. I can't be hypocritical. But then after a while, the test stops because it's temporary. But the trial keeps on going on. I'm in the middle of a circumstance and it hasn't let up just yet. It's consistent. It's there. It's persistent. And I'm like, God, is there anything way around this? Why won't people believe God? Why you only pay tithe once a year and expect for a miracle to come? It's a distraction. But then the trial eventually is over with. Now, the circumstance is still going on. What once looked like a distraction is actually encouragement. Amen. You got it. <laughs> so now the circumstance, I don't look at the circumstance like how I originally did. Because the circumstance was originally a distraction, but now that circumstance has turned around for my benefit. All good things come together for those that believe God according to his purpose. What Satan meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Now, in the midst of that, didn't y'all hear me holler? Didn't my face look distressed? Didn't it seem like I was trying to get a way out of it? I was trying to get out of it myself. But it was God that sent all of those situations to me. So that the next time when trials, tests, and circumstances come up again, I'm stronger because I've seen this movie before. So now I don't react by, oh, God. Now it's praise God. Lord God, I thank you. Lord God, I honor you. Lord God, I worship you. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Whoa, I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. But you got to believe that. It's hard to believe that when you got needles in your back and in your chest from all the things that you're going through. But eventually, you have to become a dead man or a dead woman. That means that eventually that situation or circumstance is not, it, 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 eventually it, it's either you or the situation. Either you got to die to yourself or that situation is going to kill you. I think I want to die to myself first because I want to live a long, long time. Scripture said, let's go back to that. Verse 11 says, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. So that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but it has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God. So I spoke. Sometimes you got to say it until you see it. We know that God, as it says in verse 14, who raised Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit, divine truth and, and guests and visitors. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our, pre watch this, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Oh my goodness, Charles, you got me pregnant and this baby is coming. I hate you. I hate the pain. It hurts. It hurts. I see stretch marks. I don't look the same. It hurts. It hurts. I don't have any money for plastic surgery. It hurts. 
It hurts. But you wanted the baby. No, I didn't ask for a baby. It was an accident. It still hurts. It was Valentine's Day. I don't know nine months later. Yeah. It hurts. But then when the baby comes out, you don't say get back in there. When the baby comes out, you don't say all that pain I went through and you're the reason for it. You look at the baby, you're like, oh. Mama's kiss the baby. Daddy's just there shocked and amazed, trying to keep him passing out. Like, what is that? I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> I'm preaching. If you never saw what happened, you don't even understand. If Al, all of us that had children, you know exactly. All of it. I got <clears throat> all of this is for your benefit. And as the God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. Now, notice this. Here it is. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen for the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. When I was in the midst of situations, trials, and circumstances, I was focused on something. Even though I was discomforted, I was focused on God the entire time because he's the only one that does not change. You have to have a vision. You have to keep your eyes on Christ Jesus while you're in the midst of the situation, circumstance. That doesn't make it hurt any less. It just makes it better. You missed it. It doesn't make it hurt any less. It makes it better. Because now you're not thinking that you're being punished by Zeus. <laughs> and he's getting you back for what you did last summer. No. He's making you stronger. You're in the spiritual gym. How can you be a champion for God unless you go and work out? Or rather, he works you out. He's your personal trainer. Amen. You get that? You get that? All right, all right, all right. So I want to encourage the people of God. You can make it. Keep going. Dry your eyes. Keep going. Folk left you. Keep going. Not enough money. Keep going. Pain in your body. Keep going. You have issues, circumstances, trials, and tests. Keep going. Divorce. Keep going. <laughs> Broken heart. Keep going. People won't come. Keep going. People are not saying thank you. Keep coming. You got to keep going. You got to keep on pressing forward. You'll go from saying, why am I going through it to I had to go through it. I remember a long time ago when I first was called a priest back in 2001, I believe. I remember that when I was doing my sermons and things like that, I was thinking to myself, self, you're pretty good at reading and you can read off the fly. You can do anecdotes and different types of comments and things of that nature. That's why when I, whenever, if you look at my sermon, I don't write down everything that I say. It's just a God, gift, that God, gift that God gave me. And so when I'm ministering or when I was ministering at that moment in time, I was reading the text. It was weird to me. Because although I was preaching, I thought at that time that if I preached those same words that I heard other preachers preach that were older, that I was going to get the same response. No, no, no. So now, 14 plus years later, 
I done been through some things. And so now I know what we've been to hell and back is all about. Now I know what suffering is all about. Now I know what betrayal is all about. People who say, yes, I'll be there with you, Pastor Martin, and then they leave, and you still got to stay. So when you go through betrayal, I know how to preach to you. Loss and family, deaths and family, I had to go through that too. Three of my closest uncles and my grandfather died in my second year of ministry. And I had to do my grandfather's funeral with no tears. And there's other things that I, that, I, that I could share with you, but I just want to let you know that oftentimes when you are going through, it is for the good. Because here's the thing. If you want to touch a whole lot of people, you got to go through a whole lot. If you don't want to touch anybody, then you won't go through anything except for your same situation, that is. So as I conclude, your pain has a purpose. I like this. Regulators, mount up. Get suited and booted. Because God has a blessing on the other side of through. I'm just going through it. I don't understand why. I'm just going through it. Look at my Facebook post. Smiley face turning to frowns every single day. It's bad. It's bad. Lord God, help me. I don't understand why you're taking me through this. I was doing better last year. I didn't go to church at all. And now I'm going to church more and it's gotten worse. You done met that man in Winter Park and it seems like things just got terrible. Oh, my God, I thought it was supposed to get better. The preacher said that everything was going to be all right. It is. It's not going to hurt any less, but it is going to get better. So there is a blessing on the other side of through. You came this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, he's not going to fail you now. Wouldn't it be nice to see what the other side of through looks like? Because those that came before you also went through some things too. And it always seems like people who've gone through a lot but made it with a smile on their face, they got power behind them. A whole lot of power. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 through 13. Y'all trying to make me preach hard, but that's okay. I'm not going to preach hard to you. You don't get it. Verse 3 says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one, no one, no one, no one in this building engaged in warfare entangles him or herself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he or, uh, is not crowned until he competes according to the rules. And the hardworking farmer must be uh, first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that uh, Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may be able to obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right, be all right. The Holy Ghost done told me everything's going to be all right. Oh, the Holy Ghost done told me ah, everything's going to be all right. 
Oh, the Holy Ghost done told me everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. Are you ready to die? We see that, we say that, but the dying feels like, you mean when I leave from out of here? No. You got to trust in the Lord until you die right now in your flesh. Come on, stand to your feet. Now, this is part of you dying right now. Stop sitting there looking at me like a ward on a pickle or a gator by the lake. People are so accustomed to just, are you going to, I'm not going to do nothing. If the praise ain't in you, ain't going to come out. See, the reason why I did those particular old songs is because they have so much power behind them. And I don't know what you've been going through. But the situations and circumstances that I've gone through throughout my life, I, whenever I go through something, I wake up with one of these songs from back in the day. I wake up with hearing a praise or worship song that has gotten me through a very, very dark place. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and by supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I've learned that. And I understand that. The reason why I could stand here in front of you and for some of you that have known me, the reason why I could stand here in the midst of others' inconsistency, two or three people coming to Bible study for five years in a row, or preaching and teaching, because you know, people always post about, see, that's why I don't go to church, and all the bad churches that are out there. I would like for those same people to give me a top 10 list of the recommended churches that you would recommend people to go to that are right and that are true. But what I've learned is is that people don't like to go to good churches either. It is what it is. It's the mindset that's going on in the people today. But you think that's going to stop me? If you have your own ministry, you think that that should stop you? Amen. So you can stay home for the rest of the year. There will be somebody else that will come and wants to hear the word of the Lord. And I know that whatever situation or circumstance that you're going through, it may not seem like anybody's supporting, anybody's there, anybody's trying to do something, nobody phone call, mom and daddy won't help you, none of those different types of things. Don't worry about it. Eventually, you'll be on the other side of through. So when you see Pastor Martin and Divine Dance or Divine Worship on Super Channel 55, praise up and worshiping God. (laughs) Don't come up to me for prayer. Come up to me for prayer right now when there is nobody around. Therefore, I'll know your motives are right. Father, thank you for this time. (laughs) We thank you, Lord God, and we worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing for us to learn that suffering is not here to put us in silence, but it is to strengthen us. We thank you, Lord God, for the tests and trials and circumstances that are here to make us stronger, make us wiser, to make us better. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. We thank you, Lord God, for that word and others like it. We thank you, Lord God, for a spirit of encouragement and faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. 
We thank you, Lord God, for many of us are on the brink of greatness, on the brink of the other side of through. And Lord God, if it feels like it's getting worse and worse and worse, even after we're getting closer to you, Lord God, let us know that everything is going to be all right and that we can trust you even though we can't trace you. We can trust you even though it seems like there's trouble. We can trust you even though there's turmoil. We can trust you. We thank you, Lord God. And we will trust in you until we die to our flesh. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing peace that surpasses all human understanding. May it abide with us now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Oh, the drummer just got up here. Oh, Lord. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I know we got some good announcements. Keep on playing. I think that's good. Do y'all know that song, I Will Trust in the Lord? Okay, let me hear you sing it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do it. It only has one little part. <laughs> All right. Da Put your hands together. I will trust in the Do it even though you don't feel like doing it. That's practice. I don't feel like doing this. You got to die to that. I will treat. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody. That's all the words. I'm going to treat everybody. Until the hater in you, till the jealousy dies, even those that betrayed you, even though he or she doesn't deserve it. I will trust. Last time, I will trust in when people have betrayed you. When people have left you, when they didn't show up to your birthday party, I will. right until you die not go to heaven die I'm talking about until that part of you dies that says I don't trust anybody that needs to die until the skepticism dies out of your spirit amen trust in the Lord treat everybody right until the part of you that says Hey, I ain't nothing but all crooked preachers everywhere. No, they're not all crooked. You're not the only one that's doing right. For the Bible said that God has 7,000 prophets that did not bow to Baal. There's a remnant. We just got to keep on looking and searching and preaching and teaching and loving and reaching out and feeding the hungry, clothing the naked until we run across one of those 7,000. Until we run across the remnant. Because when that happens, then the church will be strong. I can't tell you how many times, and you can go ahead and get ready to give because we're getting ready to get out of here. You can get your gifts together. I'm just talking to you. I can't tell you how many times in this ministry and life where I've wanted to compromise to make things easier on myself. There have been many times where I've also wanted to copy the preacher's have a $50 line, a $100 line, faith, fake healing services. You know technology is good today where I can look up your information before you even get here. And then I can say, Sister Sally, is there a Sally in here? Because the person already done research on me. 
come on up here. You have a brother? Isn't his name is John? Really? Father God, in the name of Jesus, heal John right now. And they already done research. I don't do that. We do our stuff the old fashioned hard way. We tell you the truth. We preach heaven and hell. We love you. And we stand on biblical principles. And even though you may feel uncomfortable at times with the truth, it's better for you to feel uncomfortable with the truth than go to a ministry where you can love the way that they lie. It's better for you. All medicine doesn't taste good, but you still got to take it anyway. And for those of you that still don't understand why you're here, Remember, you have to go from being a person that is sick to being a physician. You missed it. When you get healed, you know the process means that you're supposed to be converted. So when you're healed and God has given something to you, you now have to turn it to the doctor for someone else. You can't stay on the table and be a patient forever. Amen. Amen. So when God has healed you and because God has been good to you, share that with someone else, all right? All right, let me bless this offering. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless the offering right now, some 30, some 60, even some 100-fold. Lord God, we're on fixed income. Lord God, we have situations and circumstances, but nevertheless, Heavenly Father, you have still been good to us. And we thank you, Lord God, and we honor you. Let us give as you have also given to us the best that we can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be blessed, people of God. As you consider yourselves dismissed, go ahead and you can start giving right now. Sister Pamela has envelopes. She's walking through the aisle. Amen. When she holds up the envelope, it's not a, a prayer card. It's for you to give. <laughs> All right. Be blessed, people of God. For those of you also, you could give in the back. As a side note, I do not look at people's tax receipts, so I do not know how much you gave. But if you did not give a lot last year, give more this year, all right? Be blessed, people of God. go. We're going to let you get out of here. If you're still giving, continue to give. Sister Pamela is there, um, but we don't want to prolong the time. But we want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants your dreams and visions realized. Amen. Be blessed, people of God. Consider yourselves dismissed.